So it's come to this. <laughs> hey folks, I'm Reviewy Mick, Review Face, coming back at you. And uh, today, we're mixing eggnog with every liquor in my liquor cabinet at once. So if you've been uh, following my Instagram or my TikTok or my YouTube shorts lately, you'll have seen that I have been over the last month mixing delicious, delicious eggnog with all kinds of different strange and unusual liquors to see what's good, what's bad, and what's just plain ugly. Uh, but then, you know, it's it's uh, New Year's Eve. So happy New Year's Eve to you all. Hope you all have a better 2022. Let's just put it that way. So I thought, we gotta send this year out on a bang. Gotta end this series on a bang. What can I do? So I thought, literally, the only thing I can do here is to literally mix all of these alcohols at once, top that up with eggnog, give it a big chug and see how awful it is. And it's gonna be awful. But this was inspired by my father-in-law, Terry, who um, to, you would take the, uh, the dregs out of all of his liquor bottles and mix them into one mix that um, those of you who watch the Review Emic Review Face channel on the regular will know I don't curse on my channel, but uh, you know what? This is just what Terry calls it. He calls it his Rocky Mountain Bear f***er. So in honor of Terry, we are doing Rocky Mountain Bear f***er eggnog today. So uh, let's have at it. What we're gonna do is just gonna pour a little bit of each of these bottles, a tiny, tiny amount into this gigantic glass here. Not sponsored by Sleeman's. Starting off with our three-year-old Cuban rum. And uh, let's see what we get next. Oh, we've got the uh, dill pickle vodka next. Let's go real light on that one. We don't need too much of that. You know what this reminds me of? As I throw a bottle on the floor. This reminds me of uh, back in college when I hosted a Purple Jesus party where uh, I had a, there we go. A little of the espresso from Rosso and Confluence. Uh, you fill up a swimming pool in your living room with purple Kool-Aid and everybody brings a bottle and dumps it in, which was great until somebody showed up with a bottle of really bad sake, ruined the whole thing. Beef Eater London Gin, speaking of ruining things. Um, so if you had watched any of my challenges over the last month, and you thought, oh man, the liquor I wanted to see didn't win. Well, today's your lucky day. You'll get to see it. A little bit of Bacardi. They do have a good collection of white rums. They do mix lovely into all kinds of different things. A little Parrot Bay. This is uh, the wife's favorite kind of rum. A little Malibu. Oh, the dreaded Peri Peri Vodka. This stuff might have been okay when it was fresh, but this is a very old bottle. And it tastes like it. Really not good. A little of the dark Cuban rum. And if anybody's like, oh man, you're wasting X really good liquor. Remember, it's, uh, it's like a half a teaspoon per. And uh, I kind of find, I mean, these are all just gathering dust in my liquor cabinet. A uh, little Tito's vodka. If you're looking for a good vodka, I highly recommend Tito's. They also do awesome things for rescue dogs in the States. Tito's vodka, really cool. Really like them. Next, we got the uh, the 90, the 20 year old Canadian rye whiskey. I don't think this one ever featured in a competition, uh, but it's not a bad rye whiskey. Uh, next, we're going to the Salsa Tequila Gold. That's right, Tequila Gold. That'll be something. Uh, the tequila and eggnog, so far, not a winning combination. The cold brew, Jameson's cold brew whiskey, however, and eggnog was a lovely combo. That one I recommend. Next, uh, the Terramana, the Rocks tequila. This is the one we did try on the channel. You know, one of the challenges. Great tequila, makes wonderful ranch water does not do so well in eggnog. The old fashioned, this, we've I've tried a whole bunch of different old fashions. And quite frankly, this one right here, the Wiser's old fashioned mix is my favorite. It is lovely, just a little bit of orange peel and uh, some ice in there and you are good to go. The Cabassier, which uh, 
Mm, again, a very nice alcohol being wasted here in this Rocky Mountain bear f uh, Then we got the Fregoli uh, with the strawberries. Yes, I don't know why I bought it. It was for a particular cocktail at a particular time, and I have no idea what that cocktail was or what the point of that was. So it's uh, it's very slowly been drizzled away in the back. Uh, the pumpkin spice Baileys. Uh, so we'll just add a little of that in there. God, I don't know how much is in this bottle and I don't want to dump like a ton of, oh, look at that, that was a lot. That was more than I intended for the pumpkin spice Baileys, but uh, oh well. The, uh, the plum brandy, that's right, plum brandy. That was not one of my favorites. I had high hopes for the plum brandy. Uh, again, that was bought for some reasons that I now can't recall. We've got some Empress Gin. This stuff's really cool um, in that it uh, it changes color when it uh, reacts with an acid. It goes from blue to purple, I believe. I don't know. Yeah, you can't see any color change in there. It's just kind of all cloudy, murky and kind of disgusting looking. Next, we've got uh, McQueen and the Violet Fog uh, handcrafted gin that I have to use very little of because this I think is a very nice gin and we should not be wasting it in here. But I've actually found the gins mix rather well with eggnogs. Um, the juniper doesn't do bad things. The uh, Weiser's Hopped Whiskey. Uh, you know what? Hops and peats and things like that that make tasty liquors don't tend to do too well in eggnogs. Um, something a little sweeter, you could probably, it seems to do better. Got some of the Eau Claire Parlor Gin here as well. Ah, throwing things around. Uh, I'm trying to be, you know, just delicate little pours of each of these because, again, I don't want to waste these liquors. And I also don't want it to be like that full of alcohol. Uh, now we've got the Glen Farkas Highland Single Malt 12 year old Scotch Whiskey. Somebody out there is crying seeing that mixed into that. Uh, we've got a little of the Maker's Mark. Actually, I've got two Maker's Marks. I'm not going to include the one that's unopened because we've got enough Maker's. Ooh, that was a slightly heavier pour of Maker's. Um, oh, yeah. D's Nuts. We've got the D's Nuts Peanut Butter Whiskey, which, you know what? I mean, you get a bit of a scent of peanut butter off of it. That was it. There we go. But I didn't get a lot of peanut butter taste off of it. You know? I've uh, got the Rebecca Creek Texas Whiskey, which uh, is lovely, and I quite enjoy this one. I'm obviously going to have to speed this up, otherwise this video is going to be like three hours long. The Manhattan uh, Vermouth and Eggnog are not friends. Not friends at all. Don't recommend that one one bit. A uh, little Tangeray, which again, I've got another bottle of Tangeray right there. We don't need to include both bottles of Tangeray. And anybody who's like, well, you only put a little bit of that one in and more of this one. It's not scientific. It's a YouTube video. I'm mixing a bunch of boozes together to drink with eggnog. So slow your roll. Um, yeah, some of these may not be precisely measured. Oh, come on out. There we go. Little of the uh, Black Sage. It's a lovely port style drink. Oh. I'm sorry, Jai. I still don't know how to pronounce this. He tried to help. Kirschwasser. And I pronounce it wrong, and I'm sorry. And I'm also sorry because he says this is actually a pretty nice Kirsch to be wasting. So, apologies. Uh, Bombay Sapphire. Because everyone likes a little Bombay. I have a feeling this is going to be a very uh, gin forward drink. Some Johnny Walker Red Label. This is looking disgusting. Absolutely foul. And I told myself, let's get a little more of Johnny in there. I told myself I was not going to smell it 
until it was ready to go. The Confluence Negroni craft cocktail. Um, again, a very nice cocktail. I don't think it uh, it plays all that harmoniously with the eggnog. We've got some Southern Comfort. I was really hoping someone was going to vote yes on this one, but uh, it got voted down. Uh, Soco and eggnog is a lovely combination. I suggest trying it. It's that little bit of oranginess in it. Uh, the Kings County, the peated bourbon. Again, I love this bourbon, this Kings County stuff. It's fantastic. But again, peat, peat and things like that just don't. All right, there we go. Don't go well with the eggnog. We've got some more tequila, the Hornitos tequila, because why not? There we go, good healthy splash. The Hornitos, the Crown Royal. We did try the salted caramel Crown Royal, which was delicious. So this is just straight up Crown Royal. Uh, we've got Cointreau, 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 Cointreau which adds a lovely orangey flavor. So no complaints on that. The Di Sarono. Oh, yes. Uh, a little amaretto. Yeah, amaretto and eggnog. It's wonderful. I, again, it's another one of the ones. Highly recommend that. I did actually forget two alcohols in the fridge that we cannot forget, unfortunately. Uh, one of them is white wine. Again, white wine and eggnog. Okay, oh, that was way too much white wine. That was a terrible idea. And then this is how to do eggnog properly. This is the Ship and Anchors eggnog. They do this every year. It is fantastic. It has all kinds of lovely, delicious alcohols in it, and they know how to mix it properly. If you ever get a chance, I don't know, they may be done selling it this year. If not, you may want to see if you can sneak off to the Ship and Anchor in Calgary, Alberta, to get yourself some of their eggnog. Some Old Smoky Moonshine. Uh, again, this just, it's, just tastes like burning. So, not super great. Let's go move on to the Kahlua. Nice little coffee liqueur there, very nice. Again, mixes well with the eggnog. Um, some Sexton Single Malt Irish Whiskey, uh, which is fantastic stuff. And I really shouldn't be wasting it in the likes of this. There we go. Just a tiny drizzle. Mmm, delicious. A little of the mezcal. Um, again, this one was surprisingly better than I expected it to be. Um, I thought the smokiness would be terrible, and it wasn't. So cheers to the mezcal. Getting down in numbers here, we've got the Grand Marnier. Another lovely liqueur. This looks like someone threw up in a glass. Not looking pleasant. Uh, we're going to top it with the Guinness last. Uh, so these are the Jack Pine Gins. So these are gins that I've made out of hand-collected juniper berries. Uh, as well as some orange peel and some other spices. So we're going to mix a little of Jack Pine Gin 1 and 2. And uh, see how those go in there. Really looking foul. Horrific, terrible. Uh, the Domaine de Canton. Uh, it's a lovely ginger liqueur that obviously I haven't cracked in a while. There's not that much left of it. But yeah, lovely ginger flavored liqueur. Then we've got uh, the torched, the Bacardi torched black cherry, which that tiny little lid. There we go. Ah, is I think that's a lid only a child could remove. 
A little black cherry in there. That hurts the teeth. We've got some white owl, white whiskey. There we go. We've got, oh, the Jag, the Jägermeister. Really, I think this was pos this and the white wine were two. I gotta do a little more than that. Were two of my least favorite mixes this entire series. The Saint Remy brandy, very nice. Nice little brandy there. We've got the Casadore Tequila Reposado. A lot of tequila in this one. Terrifying. All right, down to, we've got the Chambord, a recent addition, that lovely cherry, or sorry, raspberry liqueur. Very delicious. We've got the Weiser's Deluxe. That's just a, a deluxe whiskey, rye whiskey, Canadian. Very nice. We've got the Jack Daniels Honey. I did drink the rest of the fire, so that's gone. We've got some Scrappy's Aromatic Bitters, because we're going to do a little bitters in here, too. There we go. Finally, the Guinness. Now, just for you to get a look at that, that really, that's a lot of booze in there. And it's a lot of chunky booze. Very, I'm going to give it a sniff now. Smells vaguely tequila-ish and a bit chocolatey. It's odd. So, uh... I know this isn't how you're supposed to do Guinness, but... Whoa! Ruining the can, but I'm sorry to all you Guinness aficionados. That's just what we're doing. All right. Moment of truth. That is, uh... This many alcohols, I'll put a number on the screen right here. Uh, mix together, little bits of each. Mix in with eggnog. Here we go, watch for this lovely. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that swirl. Oh yeah. Now this is my, once I finish this carton, this will be my 13th liter of eggnog that I've finished. I think that's gonna be it for me for this year. I think I finally, reached my limits for eggnogs. So I think I'm done. Especially after this, I think this will possibly kill me. So thank you for everybody who joined along on this journey to taste every different alcohol available in my liquor cabinet in eggnog. Here it all is down the hatch. That's instant regret. That is, oh. Oh. That tastes like, that tastes like vomit. Oh, it's. Oh God, that's bad. Oh, that's so bad. Ah, uh, it's very, you get the smell from the tequila, you get some sourness in there. Oh, it just tastes like licking a bar floor at two o'clock in the morning. Oh. I'm giving myself a second to keep it down. That was really unpleasant. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching this series. Hopefully it gave you some fresh ideas on new and interesting alcohols to try with your eggnog next year. Um, again, personal favorites, uh, an eggnog old fashioned, and uh, an eggnog and Guinness were both delicious. Again, as always, 
please at all costs avoid peri peri vodka white wine oh and jägermeister those are the no-go's thanks so much for watching uh, make sure you click that subscribe button as i do weird ridiculous things like this all the time for reasons i cannot explain to myself afterwards or my wife either beforehand or after thanks so much for watching make sure you smash that like button smash that subscribe button lisa that's for you thanks so much for watching i'm reviewing mick review face i'm not trying to sell you anything maybe sometimes maybe uh, maybe sometimes is a good idea thanks for watching and i'll see you next review